very happy to be here along among uh, the eminent panelists who are the learned ones i also have some of my mentors sitting with me today to discuss uh, what we call as one of the very relevant topics uh, in these times driving growth through innovation and partnerships so last week i was in the global business summit hosted by economic times in delhi and i had uh, i sat through an interesting interview that was of uh, steven shawsman who is the uh, co-founder and chairman of blackstone okay world, one of the world's largest uh, investor no a uh, time senior journalist was interviewing him and this was his first question that what was steven's take on india inc and its growth and steven says for some reason we which means a global investor private equity investors were made to believe that india is poised for a 9% growth now here today we look at a reality of a 4 and a half percent growth right and that got the whole uh, audience kind of silence lot of real estate magnate sitting in the uh, room must have kind of sweating that you know this is what we hear from the largest investor so then after a couple of minutes there was a second question that what is his outlook for the future investments in india and stephen says we have invested about 15 billion us dollars in the last since 2006 and in the next 3 to 5 years we would like to double it now this is an interesting paradox of how global is looking at india inc and our growth imagine if we were at 7 and 1/2% what would have been the investor stake now with that not wasting much time let me get into uh, taking introductory views from the eminent panel on the theme of today which is driving growth through innovation and partnerships to start with uh, mr devesh i would like to request you you been an entrepreneur uh, also interestingly the lockheed martin awardi on innovations i think almost a decade and decade and half back so with your uh, a technology product uh, i think it was uh, in the aerospace industry right the power over it ethernet so i would like to hear from you your take on innovation and how do we manage sustain growth using innovation in these times uh, i'm sorry could you repeat the question so i'm saying uh, based on your experience and you're also been an you know a body lockheed martin awardi for uh, as an innovator uh, for your product uh, so poe right it's called power over ethernet so i want to you know understand your take on how do we kind of sustain growth in these times and how innovation and partnership can become the game changers uh in the global economy today we have got sort of two ways uh, to approach things and uh, let's face it if you look at the clothes that you are wearing if you're just wearing a standard white shirt you know you'll just go to a store and you'll say ah yaar i get the same terrycott shirt that show store next to so, you know 500 rupees you are asking me 600 and then you'll go to the store at 500 and say the store next to you is at 400 so it just becomes a sort of pricing game but stick a label on that you know that says dkny or it says fc uk or it says uh, i don't know who's uh, sabya sachi or something like that and all of a sudden that fellow is going to say you want the shirt for 20000 take it otherwise i've got another 10 people behind you and at that point you are no longer buying a product but you are buying somebody's mind somebody's somebody's innovation and ultimately it is innovation that is required to keep ahead of competition and unlike some fallacies that may be in our minds innovation doesn't have to be something like a big bang innovation is very very small incremental approaches also uh in in manufacturing we have this concept of you know the japanese quality techniques which includes the word kaizen 
And Kaizen basically is a better way of doing it. Just every day, it could be something. I need to put a shaft inside a bush. Now there are two ways. Either I can heat the bush or I can chill the shaft. Or I can use brute force. So somebody came up with a method of doing one, two, three. And it improves the production process. It reduces my cost of everything. In the chamber, it's the same way. If you see here in front, we have got some of the senior most people from some of the biggest companies in Bangalore, in Karnataka, and maybe even in India. And they share, and they continue to share, not just with the members of the chamber, but their best practices, what they have spent time innovating. Similarly, the chamber, as I pointed out in my presidential address, we have the Emerging Stars Award where we are uh, focusing on startups. We have innovation awards, but we said let us focus on social innovation. Innovation that can benefit society. We all, for instance, com complain about traffic. Who have we seen that has developed an app that can do something about the traffic? I think that is the biggest innovation still waiting to happen. Is there some way we can find a way to beat the traffic and I'm not talking Google Maps? Thank you. Thank you, Devish. Uh, Shekhar, you've been, you know, advising various, you know, sectors, corporates, industrialists in your career over the last two and a half decades. Uh, largely dealt with the regulators, policy makers. Now, what's your take on you know, growth partnerships? And the innovations and how you know, entrepreneurs should look at leveraging them in these times. Innovation, it's not something new per se, it's there in every corporate organization for ages. But thanks to technology, this innovation concept has come up, it has caught up everybody's attention. If you go back to manufacturing organizations, very old. They used to have a continuous R&D department. In the, nobody called them as innovators, but R&D department was meant for only for improving the product process quality because it's part and parcel of every manufacturing organization years back. When the industry moved from manufacturing into the technology, IT and then IT moved to technology, no, today nothing is called IT, everything is technology. The innovation has brought everybody. The reason is very simple. People wanted the service at the doorstep. Customers wanted everything at fast, at a better point, at the doorstep. So therefore, you need to satisfy the aspirations of the customers and the community. And how to satisfy the aspiration of the community of large only through a better thinking and that leads to innovation. Any organization for that matter, whether it is a service organization like us, or whether it is a technology organization like Swiggy, Zomato, those, or manufacturing organizations, innovation is become part of the process. And without innovation, you can't do anything. Innovation does not mean that you need, uh, you need to find out something, uh, a rocket science. It's just a question of how you do, how you improve services. To give a simple example, 10 years back, the organization model was asset heavy. Today, everybody is turning towards asset light model. The balance sheet is very, very light. They don't want any heavy assets, everything in asset light model. Can you ever imagine a, a biggest hotel company does not own any company? Can you ever imagine a biggest restaurant does not own any restaurants? So, people trying Moving towards asset light model rather than an asset heavy model just 10 years back. And one of the ways to look at the asset light model is innovation. And even as services, let me take my, my friend is sitting opposite me, Badrina. 10 years back, have you ever imagined that returns will be filing on online on the tax returns, be it GST, be it sales tax, be it income tax? Would not have imagined it. Today, everything is going through online. And the government itself is doing it, they said we do a faceless assessment. Probably you may have some here and there some challenges, but the way it is going in the next three years, you don't need human bodies to do the assessment, maybe robots will be there. So in 
is why one of the government secretary, one of the captain of the industry in Bangalore, is a checker over a period of time. You will have a robot to do all the jobs which a human being is doing without where the process is involved. Where the intelligence is involved, robots may not be required. That's what he said in his back. Now, with where the intelligence and artificial intelligence is coming up. So, the innovation is inevitable. And I see more innovation in the young guys like these people. In fact, uh, I was speaking with some of the startup guys. They said, check it. The guy with 23 to 25, they come out with a better idea. And they need somebody like you guys to come with the experience to mentor. So, they assume that after 45 years, our brain will not work. We will not be able to innovate anything. Our mind is wanting to support them. It's a fair assessment of them. But having said that, the young mind has got more energy for innovation. What is innovation? Partnerships. You innovate, but there is always a challenge to take it to the market. There is always to the commercialization. There is always a challenge to reach out to the customers. And partnerships helps us. Ten years back in organization, any organization which when I started my career in 1835 years, ten years back the partnerships are not considered as a viable option in any of the organizations. No, we will not partner, we will do on our own. Because there is always a branding issue, there is a quality issue. Today people prefer partnerships. People more aligned to the partnership because your ability to reach the customers is very high. And come to put it in a short innovation, partnerships, both are inimitable. And probably in the next 10 years, today what I am saying, the 4D revolution, or next year 5D, 6D, the next 10 to 15 years, innovation, partnerships are inimitable. And the com companies, the professionals who embrace that culture will be successful. Professionals and cultures who do not embrace that culture will be left behind. And I, I keep repeating to you, Bharat, you worked with me, so I know that. Professionals keep running, not for winning, for staying in the same place. So you better embrace the innovation, you better embrace the partnership, otherwise you'll be left behind. Thank you. That is a very interesting perspective. In fact, uh, what Mr. Shaker touched on was a bot in a human scenario. So taking that, Mr. I want to maybe interest you, uh, you the uh, very critical talent function for the largest uh, IT companies in the world. Uh, you know, what's your perspective, you know, more from an eye of a lens of a talent leader uh, for innovations and partnerships? Sure, thank you. Uh, the first thing I want to say here is a uh, bit shocking to the students. Uh, if you are looking for a job, remember one thing that your college degree is not going to lend you a job. Because in the future of work, it is skills. Skills is the new currency. Right? So with that, I have to tell you this. Uh, Apart from a college degree, corporations outside are looking for people who come with something called a purpose. Okay? A purpose to bring across traditional barriers okay? and to innovate. Now, how do you innovate? Okay? When you say partnerships, I'm going to change it slightly and I'm going to call it collaboration. Okay? Unless you come to a table or a garage and collaborate, you don't get innovation. Okay? So, as far as possible, you've got to get people together, you've got to have diversified minds, you've got to have an inclusive mindset, okay? And that by itself would drive innovation. Then comes, what is in store for me? I'll give you a quick analogy, uh, which is a true story of this lady, her name, let's call her Rukmani. Okay, Rukmani was about 26 years old, she joined this uh, very good MNC from campus and bright mind. Uh, she was doing extremely well, got many awards, went abroad, uh, clients loved her and things like that. Until one fine morning, um, she gets a call from her manager and says that Rukmani, can you come and have a chat with me? Uh, so Rukmani is a bit uh, nervous because first thing in the morning if her manager calls you, uh, you missed up something. So she goes and asks him, yes, what is it? And we have a coffee and then he says, 
Definitely, you're a great performer. You came from this campus. Uh, you got us new business uh, rewards and new clients and things like that. But I have to tell you that our organization has shifted its strategy three times in two years. And therefore, the skills that you bring to the table are going to be relevant in the next three months. So, if you do not scale up to change your skill set from a half stack to a full stack, then I'm sorry, you don't have a job. So, what does Rukmani do? She is very dumbfounded, she's surprised and shocked. Nobody spoke to her. She goes and then does various programs. She also invests in herself, does various certifications. She gets uh, her eminence improved on social media and at the end of three months she has completed various programs and then she is relevant. And then her manager says, okay, we can give you this job, but Rukmani says, no, um, I'm not really interested in this particular job because I found I had purpose in life because um, I today am committed to add to the environment something that I can do. Like for example, I'm very concerned about pollution. So I would like to work for this airline company, cut code in Java, and enable them to have a lower carbon footprint. So I'm going to do that work for three days, and I'm going to come and work for you for the other two days. So what happened is that the workforce transitioned from there into a gig economy, or what you call a gig workforce, from a single stack set of skills to a full stack set of skills. And what did she do? She went and encashed what she had invested in her because now she had social eminence and people were willing to pay for her. Okay, so therefore I want to conclude that why a college degree is important, it, what is relevant to the job is skills that are current and that are futuristic. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Sir. I think we touched upon one of the topics which are very relevant to the crowd, mostly. Uh, oh, by the way, you had a very interesting experience, right? Uh, you are uh, known GST expert, you trained, uh, you know, a lot of you know, policy makers at the side of the uh, issue. So you looked at uh, companies from a very different lens. When GST came, it was a disruption. Uh, and a lot of them made it very relevant, and you know, a lot of value had happened. And if you look at from a logistics you know, time that we nationally save, uh, you see uh, people responding into entrepreneurs possibly responding and making good out of it. So, what is what are your takes or experiences watching those entrepreneurs making you know good use of or innovating themselves to adapt and you know make good use of some of these regulatory changes? So, I, 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 there are two or three words you know, which which one of them you mentioned are very critical. Very critical, which obviously is going to as collaboration, right? Very important. Because when you talk about uh, you know, growth, of course, all of us want to grow. There is no doubt in that. Through innovation and partnerships or collaboration, I'll just take a minute before I answer your question of that. You know, there is this hair in the papa story. I, uh, I can even take about 10 minutes to say that, so I'll not tell you that. You should read about why, how that hair and papa story is told. Versus how it was 25 years ago. It, it, it uh, kind of tells you how important partnering and collaborating is. The new version of the hair in the top of the I'm sure Google will give it to you, but I will not take that time because I will take only 10 minutes on that. Now, coming back to your question, and what Mr. Shankar also was mentioning, you know, uh, innovation is something which is inevitable. Almost all of them are. Few of them are not owned by Microsoft. Right? 
So there are few things which we can use within that. You know, this makes the aspect of partnering with somebody or collaborating with somebody and being able to adopt. Adapting is the most important thing. Adapting it is the most important. There are so many innovations which have not seen the light of the day simply because it was not adapted. Simply because it was not adapted. And you know, in any of these innovations, the way I would look at it is mindset has to be there to try it, to adapt it. You know, on any TV, there are these competitions which go on where uh, I think it is some four or five years old when I saw it. There is a competition where each one of them is given exactly two minutes to sell a business idea. One of them came up with a business idea, you know, which was what a, a chemical composition, which if mixed with tar while rendering these roads, it will give it that flexibility and extra life. It was innovative without doubt, but it never saw the light of the day. Nobody was willing to invest in that man who gave that idea. You know, the feedback that he was given was. Maybe your invention is very nice, but I don't see the adoption of it. You know, there, there is so much of resistance that we have to adopt new things today, which kills innovation. I think we should get over that. You know, Mr. Shekhar was mentioning, saying, on the tax side, there is so many things which we are going to see in the near future, as far as interaction with the tax office, maybe a, a income tax or a GST or a customs or whoever that is which is called faceless. That is the word which uh, Shikhar sir uh, mentioned. Faceless means what? Today if something is to happen at the tax office, I have to go visit them, I have to speak to them, I have to explain to them in person. That is becoming faceless. I think income tax has already implemented it. Other laws are behind. You know? But yes, we should be willing to adopt. Till, till we do that, there is no way that things are going to change. Just adding to what he was mentioning on the tax office side. Today, there are so many filings that happen. Everything happens in Bing. You know, when, when there are submissions which happen to any of these uh, tax office side or any, any, any of the legal side for that matter, any court or quasi uh, courts, etc., there is so much of paper that goes. And trust me, everything that gets filed has to be filed in five or six months. Depends. Depends. Situation to situation. But how many times does even one paper get seen? Today there is innovation. There is already innovation. We don't need to innovate them, which is video conferencing or maybe just project it like this. Project it like this. Why waste paper by filing five or seven copies? But yes, we have not adopted it. I think these are the changes which you know we have to really push and we should show adoption as much possible so that even government side there is a force to adopt. Today, WhatsApp is part of life. I think all of us will agree to right? Tax offices also have started communicating on WhatsApp. Because it is not possible to properly communicate without the WhatsApp. Right? So even tax offices are forced to adopt. So look at something like that. Look at something like that. Maybe a faceless assessment as he said, yes. Success of that depends on how uh, flexible we are, how adaptive we are, and how we are able to support them. You know, more than, more than, I think there are enough and more innovations. I think there are enough and more ideas. I think we should, you know, goes back, uh, I'll just take a minute more. Uh, I don't know, uh, half of you would have been born also. In the early 1980s, there was only one channel on TV which was called Purgarshan. There used to be a serial which was called Star Trek. I remember that also. Star Trek. Star Trek, right? Yes, Half the uh, three fourth of them wouldn't have been born also. You know, this was in the early 80s. It was about a space, uh, you know, uh, real, something related to space, going to moon, Mars, etc. Those days, 1980s. I remember three things in that. 1980s, trust me, 1980s, early 1980s. There was a look like a mobile phone in that. There was a lookalike of a small, very small computer which we call as a pump top or a laptop. Right? Huh? Uh, yeah. Yes. And the third one, these two have come through, so you'll be able to relate to that. These two have come through. Innovations. The third one, innovation only, which has not come through, is 
very good one. There is one person, that like captain spoke or something like that. He presses some. Okay, he knows it. Right? If I press something on my watch, I can disappear here and appear somewhere. Whether it's partnership in business, whether partnership in life, if this has to be successful, there's only one mantra. Identify a right partner, accept the partner, and go with the partner. There will always be a challenge in the partnership. During the process, you will learn it, you make the changes, adapt yourselves. But very, very important, Bharat, for a partnership, a business partnership to be successful. In a business center, every business we look for three. Number one, by aligning my business with other person, whether how much my branding will enhance, how much my branding will serve. Because branding is very critical. For example, let me talk from PCS. If tomorrow we a program with somebody else, the first thing that me, Devesh and Parashuram will think about is that by working the program, it's a partnership. By going the program with them, by doing a long-term alliance, whether it will enhance the BCAC brand, whether it will bring down the BCAC brand, what is called the brand reputation. That's very important. If the partnership does not lead to my brand enhancement strategy, brand reputation, brand reputation, no. Therefore, the person seeking the alliance, the person who is willing to provide the alliance, should have a solid and they should not have any factors, anything. Number one, the brand conditions. Second, quality conditions. Very important because the business, what is very important is the delivery. The delivery skills, the delivery mechanism, and the process in which you follow the delivery mechanism is very important. He talked about the Microsoft applications, not every application developed by Microsoft. It's not only due to my credit is true for everybody. If professional life is also there, everybody is there. Where today the require 
requirement of the business, a requirement of the government is very limited. And I will not be able to do everything by myself. There is always a requirement of working with somebody. Just to give an example, a Flipkart or a Swiggy. If a Flipkart or a Swiggy, they need to do products and plan for them with somebody. Flipkart or a Swiggy is only a platform. Somebody has to deliver the product from somewhere to you. If the delivery guy delays it, the image of the delivery guy is not taking a bit, the image of the Flipkart or the Swiggy is taking a bit. So it is naturally important for an organization to make sure that the organization with whom I align has got a sufficient infrastructure for delivery. If the sufficient infrastructure for delivery is not there, then alignment is not possible. Therefore, second important critical path is delivery. Third important aspect is people. You can say technology, you can say innovation, you can say hardware. Without people, you cannot do anything. We may have robots, but somebody should operate a robot on the switch. The guy does not put on the switch, the robot will not function. So ultimately, there is a people that is required. How much the organization gives importance to the people? For example, let me pick up the same ship card or a swimming or the market maker as an example. If the delivery guy is not ethically correct, is not valuable, is ineffective, is a failure, it impacts the reputation. Therefore, how, not only the quantity of the talent, but the quality of the talent, how much ethically the organization is done. These three things are very, very critical for the partnership to succeed. And more important, both the organizations should know the place where they want to travel, their destiny, and they should have open commitment there may be challenges in reaching the destination, but we need to accept the partnership and take it forward. There are large organizations which are very successful. Uh, I can keep on quoting it, but the absolute large are very successful in the partnerships. For example, uh, you know about HP and Deloitte, the classic as well as the partnership. There are multiple examples I can give you. Even in professional field, if you go to the lawyers, some of the lawyers are they will not say no to any charter. Because they know that this guy will not say, not lie. So, partnership is important, but partnership will be set only if these four criteria is met. Otherwise, it will not be successful. <laughs> so, so, one is, as you said, you know, uh, well, this is a, shall we say, like a voluntary partnership. Also, you have what I would call as causal partnerships. Now, we've got four people sitting together in the front row who are more busy talking to each other than actually focusing on us. So, they are in partnership with each other, keeping each other entertained. Okay, I've been, I've been watching a lot of students. Basically, they were distinct. So, I'll make one dramatic statement. We all have seen how many people say uh, three, four years ago during your ICAC exams or SSLC exams, suddenly power failure, you could not study, you had to study by candlelight. How many people can raise their hands and say that yes, you have experienced major power failure? Yeah? Very good. And you will curse the government, right? Ah. Well, see, we were talking studies. You don't have candlelight dinners with your girlfriend over studies. You know, then you are indulging. In, then you are having a very different kind of study. <laughs> so, now, if I was to make a statement that it was precisely because of these power cuts, Karnataka is the IT capital of the world, you are going to go, what the heck is this guy talking about? But now I'll take you back, give you a bit of history. Karnataka, rather Bangalore was the first city in India to have electric street lights. But by the time of independence, power, Karnataka was already power deficient. If you see in Karnataka, all the power is generated to the north, bulk of industry is in the south. So what would happen? We lost a lot of power, plus Karnataka never got a central power plant, no NTPC power plant. It has very heavy dependence on hydroelectric power. Now we have in the last 20 years invested in thermal power. So when the power requirement is most, the water availability is the least. And all of 
that resulted in that heavy industry did not enter Karnataka. You did not see the big steel mills and all that. Instead, what you saw, you saw precision industries, you saw the Indian telephone industries, you saw HMT making machine tools, you saw ACE designers come in. You started seeing people like Bosch, uh, Mr. Ramesh Sahinyam, I said him here, who are making high precision machine parts, diesel fuel pumps, etc. So you started seeing an entire generation of companies who are bringing high value addition, but not much energy consumption. Now, the operative word goes back to value addition. When I'm doing value addition, it means I've got to start using my mind. That in turn drives what partnerships it then generates demand for educational institutions, which is why you see so many educational institutions in and around South Karnataka. When Texas Instruments came to India in the early 80s, specifically 1982, looking to where we must invest in India to set up an offshore development center, they were finalized finally on Bombay and Bangalore. And the reason they selected Bangalore, one of course our better climate, but most importantly because of the culture of education and the educated workforce that already existed. That is a partnership caused between industry and educational institutions which resulted in what Bangalore is today. So that's a causal partnership. And today no other city in Bangalore, or rather in India, can come up as fast as Bangalore. Why does any IT company, technology company, no matter what the cost they first set up in Bangalore? Because we have an ecosystem. And that ecosystem means we have a whole bunch of organizations, educational institutions, workplaces, companies, employers, providers, everything, working in partnership now this is a causal partnership, it need not be a deliberate partnership, but it is a cause and effect partnership, but it is still a collaborative partnership. So to create ecosystems, you still have to work with partnerships. Partnerships and ecosystem, beautifully explained. Just explain that. See, IBM, your company particularly, has been one of, I would say, the pioneers in experimenting partnerships and you know, your success has been through you know, our successful partnerships and collaborations whether it's in telecom or in consulting. Um, so can you give a little light on what worked well? Sure, happy to do that. Um, first, uh, position close to home, uh, which is industry academia partnerships. Okay. How many industries are actually partnering with you, St. Francis? It's a question. The other one is, how much endowment are you attracting from the industry? Then my other question is, do you have an innovation lab? Are you going out there into the marketplace and saying, asking them, hey, what are your problems? Throw your problems at us. We'll come up with a solution. May not be technology solution. We'll come up with a solution. That is most important, to have a partnership, because just not having a partnership is not enough. But does that partnership add value to your strategy, okay? So does that add value to your belief system, so to say? And therefore, like I told you, Rukmani's story, she had a belief system, she had a value system to uh, uh, make this world a better place. So she went and did something through the business, through a challenge at work. She's going and finding a solution using her skills. So similarly, uh, it's so important to have the value system resonate with the strategy to make the partnership a success in addition to what Shekhar had uh, stated earlier. Now, in business, um, I think we go back about 10 years, okay, when, uh, or even 15, when the telecom business had opened up in India, uh, and Bharti Airtel was one of the biggest uh, telecom, not the biggest at that time, was uh, a telecom provider. And uh, this was a very unique partnership that IBM did with Bharti, and uh, this was called uh, Business on Demand, or IT on Demand, we said that we could uh, provide you IT support or IT power just like water or electricity, okay? You open a tap, you get IT, you use what you want and then you shut it off, okay? And then we went into this billion dollar deal with Bharti um, where we said we will take care of all your computer IT related challenges. You go and focus on your core. Your core is to go and get customers. Go and acquire customers and build your base while we will manage all those other things. That partnership worked extremely well 
and four other IT companies went on and signed bigger deals and that opened the entire telecom sector hugely. Okay? So partnerships are also about that. Partnerships are very intrinsically built into your business plan. Has created also opportunities in terms of companies have to now diversify their supply chain. So that creates a lot of opportunity in as well. So the, the criticality is to talk with regulations to be uh, made suitable to you know kind of build up or respond to those opportunities. So what you want take or advise to the regulators today? Uh, what three suggestions that you would like to make that would boost our growth? And help our entrepreneurs. Sure. I, I, I'll put it this way, uh, especially the coronavirus part of it. You know, yesterday I got to one of the tech parks for one of the meetings. I was surprised to see that place. I think almost everybody there have decided to work from home. So virtually, I could see only two other people apart from me in the entire open area. You know? I, I, I was also told, say, this is an opportunity for a lot of companies to test their business continuity. You know, what happens if something like this happens? You know, they're preparing themselves also. So the thought was, you know, let's say the business continuity works very well. The work from home model works very well for a lot of companies then which actually offer to them. Then what happens to the real estate the, that is there in back? You know, in this aspect also, innovation is required. Now, real estate, own this entire real estate, have to think what to do if the work from home models really uh, works really good. Fine, not all industries it works, but yes, they are making it work. They are making it work. Uh, you know, uh, the, the, the same thing, the same thing. I think we should use and uh, optimally use technology that is available. As, as service providers, or you know, if I if I'm talking about the uh, uh, regulator perspective, if we, if if that uh, technology can be used by us to connect with people wherever they are in this in this uh, world, why not we use that as far as interaction between the uh, regulator and us is concerned? You know, today if uh, maybe Marathi will be able to add to it. If there is some uh, high court uh, that has to appear in tomorrow in Bombay, unfortunately he has to go. He has no options. He cannot sit here and you know uh, technologically be present there. It is not possible. While we do this in a lot of other work, why not we use it with our for our interaction with the regulator? You know, uh, Mr. Shaker mentioned, and it is part of law today. It is called faceless assessments. It started last year. There is a lot of uh, things happening this year also. I think there were a few discussions which happened. Faceless assessments means what? It is basically bringing in anonymity. So if there is a if there is my income tax return getting verified by somebody, that somebody does not know that it is me, and I don't know who that officer is. Right? The expectation is that this will kind of reduce or kill the corruption that is available, uh, corruption that is otherwise available, the belief. Extend this. This is an opportunity to extend, actually, you know. There is a discussion that we were having recently in the context of COVID-19, what you said. What happens, there was a wrong, uh, finally it turned out to be a false uh, uh, message on the WhatsApp, saying uh, your all offices, schools, everything has to be closed down for with immediate effect. In fact, that is when Bharat and I spoke whether this event is going to happen today. Okay. So, you know, all set and done. If that happens, if that happens, what are we, what are we going to be uh, facing? Are we prepared for them? Then a lot of things have to still go on. You know, when there is a strike in India, your necessities, your chemists and druggists are all open. The basic transport will still continue because that's a requirement. Okay. Now, if this is going to hit us in terms of look, it's going to be a lockdown. My uh, doctor mentioned that lockdown is not going to be possible in India. Hypothetically, if that hits us, 
can be in the kink of what is going to happen. But trust me, it is not going to be as bad as what we have thought. There is enough and more infrastructure and equipment that we have today where probably 75% of the work can still go on. It is, life is not going to come to a standstill. The technology is going to be put to test. The adaption of that is going to be put to test for life to go on. I'm going to just probably repeat what I told earlier. Adaption is the key for anything that we are talking about. Adaption is the key, it is. Yes, it is. Bharat uh, may be able to add to it. Today, it is not only... Uh, you would have heard of uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, etc. I think we have just scratched the surface. But we have tried using that in the knowledge space. Yes, only we have. And yes, let me uh, close by this uh, comment. It's a it's a very good thing that even the regulators have started using them. Machine learning and artificial intelligence is the way they are identifying who should be verified. You know, and after that, they are using a lot of analytics to deep dive into what really needs to be verified. This is an example of adoption. What I'm trying to say is, this should be more. That's all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Uh, you are very clear in focus on your message and implementation. It's a key and adaptation is a key. Uh, I think that was insightful. So, uh, we have come to end of, kind of end of our session. Thanks for the time that we have. Yeah, sure. Uh, some concluding remarks uh, from the panel. Yeah, you can hear. Just 30 seconds. Uh, I'm going to leave this place without throwing a challenge. And uh, because I've known that, uh, do you know who, do you know, we all have this, right? What is this? A smartphone, right? And who invented this? Steve Jobs, right? Steve Jobs is from our generation. We gave you the smartphone. My challenge to you is what are you going to give the world? And the world is at your feet. You have opportunity. India has the youngest workforce in the world. You have funding like it's been like never before. So the world is at your feet. What are you going to give? That's the challenge I throw to you. Thank you. Yeah. All of all of all yours, all of all yours. I'll get to see the next generation from, from the younger crowd. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. In fact, that was a great talk. Yeah. Uh, uh, great insights from the panel. We got from the perspective of driving innovation in these times, driving successful partnerships, collaboration, managing talent, looking at a scenario of a hybrid uh, work and human working environment, and most importantly, adapting to changes. So these are the key messages that I've learned today. And uh, before, you know, while we are concluding, any uh, questions, we could restrict to one or two questions. Uh, uh, from the audience.